Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to hit today. Big quakes, space weather, and we'll reverse the usual science news coverage to focus on the top story here right within our atmosphere. Let's go over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was very quiet. Dark coronal holes pepper the disk and we have no sunspots or solar flares. But we may have sunspots incoming here soon. Over to the left, the incoming limb presents some strong, tight, well-defined umbral magnetic fields, likely some activity coming from just behind the limb there. Solar wind is relatively calm, but just this morning you see the purple plasma speed spike up and plateau a bit. It is a weak coronal hole stream, and so Earth's magnetic field is handling that weak stream like a champion. Big quakes continued yesterday, 6.4 where yesterday's big quake was located, and a 6.2 in Panama as well. This general global uptick does continue. Let's go out to space and start a day of electromagnetic plasma science. Looking at this region of space is boring. Then you point a radio telescope at the region and you realize she's hiding something. Train Chandra on that same region, and now we're cooking. The clusters are X-ray visible for the most part. They are clusters of galaxies far away. And the radio V is the plasma shock and collisional dynamics as the galaxies are coming together. One level even cooler here is the first ever electrified buckyballs in space are discovered. Neutral forms have been spotted in interstellar clouds, but this is the first photoionized carbon-60 ever found in space. Up next, we saw a great galactic magnetism article hit archive last night. This one image is all we need to see is the white hash lines or magnetic fields, which puts them in alignment with the plane of the galaxy, something required for it to have an electric current sheet. Electric sheets in the atmosphere are important too. Falcon Heavy just took a bunch of mission technology up there, but the one observers care about is the Enhanced Tandem Beacon Experiment. The goal is to explore structure and inhomogeneity in the electric layer of the ionosphere, and hopefully it can help right a major problem in solar forcing. Folks, particle forcing from the sun has just recently been allowed into climate models for the first time. We know that the use of CMIP6 with solar forcing since that day has been extremely low by official climate scientists, probably because of what it's showing about global warming and carbon emissions. But here we find that even what we have isn't enough. I had no idea that the climate modelers try to use the zero degree angle detections instead of the 90. It is one of the first things you learn about that satellite if you learn anything at all. The zero degree pickup wildly undercounts the medium energy electrons making it into the atmosphere. And so even after the climate scientists get the courage to do a real environmental study with solar particle forcing, they still won't have the right data. Folks, the video of note on that topic is called Fatal Flaw in Climate Change Science. You can find it linked below. It is a must watch for this community and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.